There are plenty of extremely fast computers in the world, some requiring crazy custom cooling solutions or even filling entire facilities. They might be able to power artificial intelligence like Google's DeepMind or run crisis at 8K resolutions, but they all have one thing in common. Their top speed is approximately zero miles per hour. Today, we're gonna to build the world's fastest gaming PC for under 100 quid. The main building blocks are a Raspberry Pi and a cheap RC car, and the applications are almost endless. Its name is Speedy Pi. Maybe you want to get your kid to hit the treadmill rather than wasting their life on Fortnite. Speedy Pi is the perfect intermediary step to get your loved one into the great outdoors. Landlord doesn't allow pets, but you want to take something for a walk? Try Speedy Pi. Invited to a LAN party? Broken both your arms so you can't carry anything, but somehow your fingers and thumbs are just fine. Speedy Pi. By now, I imagine you're pretty much dying to build one yourself, so let's get into it. The heart of this machine is a Raspberry Pi 4 running RetroPie. That means it can run emulators from a massive variety of consoles like SNES, Mega Drive, PS1, and even the Dreamcast and N64. Then we got ourselves a 3.5 inch touchscreen TFT that, that comes with a nifty enclosure to keep it all safe. It's got a separate cover for when you're not using the screen. It also includes a fan and some little stick on heat sinks to keep the Pi cool under load. The hardest part of this project was actually getting these emulators to run on the little screen. Largely because the Raspberry Pi 4 is a fairly recent release and a lot of software hasn't got official support for it yet. The way I got it working in the end was by using the build linked in the description. It's basically RetroPi running within Raspbian and Buster. And then installing the screen drivers, which are also linked, by following the instructions and SSHing into Raspbian. The only downside is now it'll only display on this little TFT and not on the HDMI output. I'm sure there's a way to fix it, but I haven't quite figured it out yet. To be honest, the whole thing would be a lot easier on the Pi 2 or 3, and the uh, Pi 4 isn't really required at all, but I just wanted it for future projects. Up next, we got ourselves a cheap RC car from Amazon. This one was the obvious choice, as it has a lot of fast words on it, like go and racing, which means it's capable of breakneck speeds. It also came with a spare rechargeable battery, which is always useful, and it was about 15 quid in the Black Friday sale. To assemble, I first removed the shroud from the RC car. Tool free, which is nice. Then I scratched my chin for a good long while, thinking of ways to fix this all together. I thought of using standoffs or screws or something similar, but in the end I came to the conclusion that hot glue is a good idea as any other, so we're just going to do that. I snipped off the two standoffs that are in my way, and glued down the power bank that gave me a nice flat surface to mount the pie. Then just glued the pie on top of that. At this point, we're basically done. Ideally, you want a nice short USB-C cable to power the pie so it doesn't get caught in the wheels or anything. And I was planning on making one, but after seeing how many cables are inside a USB-C cable, I quickly gave up and decided to just make this long one as neat as I possibly could. Well that's it for this video, be sure to subscribe for more inspiring ways to waste your time and money. In the meantime, I'll be playing Micro Machines in real life, whilst also playing Micro Machines in not real life.